from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's 8 o'clock on Saturday, April 13th. Thank you for joining us this morning. Yeah, if you guys are just getting up right now, we appreciate you guys hanging out with us. There's a lot going on this oh, weekend. so much going on. Yeah, several events taking place. I know your little girl's about to hit the uh, baseball, the, the yep. softball field. They are just getting there. She'll start her game at 9 o'clock. Go Capital Park Tigers. Oh, all right. Shout out to the <laughs> Capital Park Tigers. So, yeah, a lot of things going to be happening uh, this weekend. So, a lot of people are going to be paying attention to the weather yep. as well. Well, let's check in with uh, meteorologist Sarah Spivey. RJ, Erica, great to have you guys mm -hmm. this morning. Sarah's off this weekend, so it's awesome as always to have you guys here. We are going to have a pretty nice weekend. And even in the pollen count today, oak has fallen from the high category to the moderate category. This is about the time of year where we start to see oak decline. Molds and pecan are present in low amounts as well. It is a mild morning. It's 62 degrees outside. 61 in Bulverde, 57 in Bernie, 58 in Kerrville, 54 Rio Medina, and 59 in Los Maples. There are still some areas of lingering fog. Visibility down to a mile in New Braunfels, down to a mile and a half in San Marcos. As you look at your KSAT 12-hour forecast, though, we are going to see sun today. 74, notice those winds. Winds are going to be on the breezy side. 84 degrees for the high temperature and a mild evening in the 70s. So breezy today, humid tomorrow. We'll you'll really notice the high humidity tomorrow and that humidity means some morning drizzle in the week ahead. I'll have those details in a few minutes. Erica RJ. Thank you, Sarah. Well, new this morning, a meetup to sell a gun takes a wrong turn and ends with two people being shot. It happened around nine last night in Bernie, but the Bear County Sheriff's Office responded to it. Sheriff Javier Salazar said three people met up with two others near an apartment complex on Star Ranch to sell a gun. This is just south of Fair Oaks Parkway off I-10. Something went wrong with the deal and shots were fired, seriously injuring two people. The sheriff's office is still trying to get all the facts straight, but they did take two other people into custody last night. It's unclear what changes. Charges will be filed. The big story northwest of Houston, a man who drove a stolen 18-wheeler into a DPS office, killing at least one person and injuring 13 others. It happened yesterday afternoon in Brenham. This is 42-year-old Clinard Parker, he is now facing multiple felony charges after the crash. Authorities said Parker seemed to have been reversing with the intent to hit the building again, but law enforcement officers were able to step in and take him into custody. The incident comes one day after Parker was denied his commercial driver's license at the DPS office. All right, as we mentioned here, we have got a lot of construction going on right now, 1604 at the I-10 interchange. So let's show you a live look right now at our transit guide camera. Take a look here at I-10 westbound traffic right there, UTSA Boulevard, and you see we already have a pretty good build up here because of this major construction work that's gonna be taking place throughout the weekend there. So that's just the shot of I-10 UTSA Boulevard. Let's show you our maps and see exactly what's going on here. So basically I-10, 1604, that will be closed until Monday around five o'clock at a.m. is when they're gonna clear out all this construction taking place. So basically if you're gonna be on I-10, there will be no main lane access all the way from UTSA Boulevard up to La Cantera Parkway. If you're going to be on 1604, there will be no main lane access basically from Vance Jackson all the way to La Cantera Parkway on the 1604 side. So they're going to have those detours and also a lot of different uh, maybe officers also there in place to kind of help our folks kind of navigate through this area. A lot of stuff is going to be going on the access roads in these areas. And one thing to keep in mind is that we do have Fiesta Fit Fest taking place here at the UTSA on their campus. And they're also going to have the Le Etap de Texas. That's going to be the the Tour de France cycling event that's going to be taking place. That's going to be running through 1604 there as well and parts of uh, Highway 16, Bandera Road, and also Highway 46. So a lot going on in that area. That's not the only thing that we're seeing in terms of construction here. We also have 1604, the westbound main lanes oh, that are going to be shut down here, um, basically from Blanco all the way to Bitters. So Blanco to Bitters, that's going to be shut down westbound traffic as crews work on uh, paving some of the roads in that area. So for all of our folks that head out to the HEB there, the target there, maybe use this Hebner area right there. You're going to run into some major traffic troubles. This again will start to clear out around 5 o'clock on Monday morning. So again, it's going to be very busy out there. Make sure you stay safe and plan ahead. These again, these closures again going to stay in place until 5 o'clock Monday morning. Erica. 
Yeah. RJ, there's a lot going on. Cones across downtown San Antonio are a common sight these days. And like RJ just said, multiple construction projects are underway. And with Fiesta right around the corner, there's concern about safety with roadways and sidewalks shut down. Avery Everett takes us to South Alamo, where businesses and people alike say it's a burden to cross the street. To keep up with the dinner rush, the team at Ola turns up the heat. It can get pretty loud in here. But not every noise heard in these walls is one that's wanted. As soon as the people go out there and start hearing the hammers or the, the noises that the construction is making, uh, they, they go back. When did construction start to become a problem for your business? Uh, as soon as it began. <laughs> This project on South Alamo Street is still in progress after starting two years ago. And it's not the only one. Downtown is flooded with cones and construction sites, all ahead of Fiesta. But the city says these are all necessary. If we don't rebuild those, we are going to have come summertime, water break, sewer line may not function. Problem is, pedestrians don't know where to go. In just one hour, standing on the side of this street, we saw multiple people crossing illegally and dangerously. Right now, these sidewalks here between Cesar Chavez and South Alamo Street are blocked off to pedestrians. So if you're planning on walking through here during Fiesta, you'll have to walk nearly 400 feet down the street just to cross at this intersection. Locals and tourists alike say all this construction is causing safety concerns. It's a little been a little bit scary with all these cars honking and going like driving all over the place. All the roads are blocked off and we had to walk about half a mile uh, to cross a pedestrian walkway and uh, and get to where we wanted to go. One of the city's solutions is for people to look down so that you can look up directions on where you need to go. Along Market and Cesare Chavez, you'll see these signs pointing you where to walk. But traffic is still something to be aware of ahead of next week. Our recommendation is really take a public transportation. With a couple of days left before Fiesta, construction isn't going to wrap up. It's actually quite inconvenient. The people traveling through San Antonio say they won't let it affect their Fiesta. Yep, not going to stop me from having fun. Avery Everett, KSAT. 12 news. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. That was the best attitude to have. Now, if you want to track these construction projects and check on their progress, Public Works has a website to do so. We have that link on ksat.com. Just look for the story. Yeah, digital producer Rebecca Salinas putting in a lot of work on that, so check that out. And speaking of Fiesta, you hear the music right there. Don't forget, there's still time to get your tickets for the exclusive KSAT Fiesta parties for the Battle of Flowers, the Day Parade, and the Fiesta Flambeau, the Night Parade. The Tickets will give you grandstand seating. You see the seating right there. You could be up close to the parade. Also, our broadcast, all of our crews out there. It also give you a chance to meet several other people that are part of the KSAT family. The Battle of Flowers Parade is on April 26th. That's a Friday. And Fiesta Flambeau is the next day, Saturday night, the 27th. So make sure to get your tickets now before we sell out. And you can find also all this information on KSAT.com. The 12th Annual San Antonio Book Festival is happening today, and all week we've been getting to know some of the authors that will be there. Yeah, this is a great event across the downtown area. This morning we hear from local author and illustrator Selena Gonzalez and Adriana Garcia. Both of them grew up on the west side of San Antonio, and they now have three books together. The two friends have been writing and illustrating for the past seven years. Selena is an author and an essayist, and Adriana is a muralist and illustrator. This will be their third time at the San Antonio Book Festival. This year showcasing their book, Remembering. It's a story that follows the making of an ofrenda for a pet during the traditional Mexican Dia de los Muertos celebration. Remembering follows a young person as they create an ofrenda to their furry friend who has passed on. Um, so our friend's family, creates, uh, helps them create an altar complete with flowers and cosas or things that him and his furry companion um, enjoyed. I like that. Reminds me of the Alebrijes. Yeah. Coco. <laughs> After dealing with the loss of their own pets, Selena and Adriana got the idea to create this book from the poem that Selena wrote during that time to help her cope with her loss. It's a mix of sadness and joy and longing and remembrance, the way it is for our tradition of Dia de Muertos. In the back of the book, you see my cat, Buju, and Adriana's dog, Simon. 
Adriana and Zelena will talk about their new book, Remembering Today, from 1 to 1.30 at the San Antonio Book Festival. For more information, just head to KSAT community page on KSAT.com. Good stuff there. All right, we are off and running 8 o'clock here, 810 right now and 63 degrees outside. A game-winning shot woo -woo, with 0.9 oh. seconds left in the game. The Spurs had the crowd at the Frost Bank Center on their feet last night. RJ will have highlights from their win over Denver later in the show. Man, those fans are hyped right there. I look like a playoff game. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Well, that's what we got. That's basically all we have <laughs> right now. End of season. <laughs> uh, live cam here. Uh, speaking about getting hype, uh, there's a lot of things going on this weekend. We'll tell you about some of them coming up. And Sarah Spivey will also give us the latest weather and how your plans will be affected. Welcome back. Well, if you have some stuff to get rid of, today is your chance to do a little bit of spring cleaning. The City of San Antonio Solid Waste Management Department is hosting a free landfill day for residents. You can get rid of household bulky items like appliances, furniture and mattresses. Construction materials are not allowed, though. You can take it to a couple of different places here. The Republic Services Landfill off I-10 East or the Waste Management Landfill on Covell Road. You have until 1 o'clock this afternoon to drop off all your stuff there, and you'll need a picture ID and a recent CPS Energy Utility Bill showing payment for the city's environmental fee. The annual Poteet Strawberry Festival continues today. They will have food, music, and fun for the whole family, and of course, strawberries. Today, things kick off with the parade, and our own David Elder of Texas Eats will be the Grand Marshal. You can find hours, ticket information, and in the entertainment line lineup on ksat.com. The festival wraps up tomorrow, and this is the perfect time to get out there. Sarah, the weather is going to be, you know, it's a little humid, but a little... But it's, it's okay. Yeah, what a great weekend. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Teach Strawberry Festival. Yeah, you know, there's been years past where, where things have not been ideal mm -hmm. for them weather-wise. But today, it's going to be pretty right. great. Tomorrow, too, just a little bit on the humid side. But mm -hmm. I guess strawberries like humidity. Uh, I'm not that's a farmer. That's interesting, yes. I got to ask. I got, even though I'm an Aggie, I'm not, I'm not that knowledgeable yeah. about that stuff. Either way, good music, good food. It's going to be a lot It'll of fun. It'll be a good time. It's yeah. going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And you know what? The sunrise this morning was beautiful. Yeah. We've got a good mixture of clouds out there right now helping to uh, make that sunrise gorgeous. It is in the 60s, though. It's 62 in San Antonio, 63 at Simpson, 63 in Pleasanton. Good morning. Morning, Rio Medina. It's 54 degrees, 57 in Bernie, 58 in Comfort, and 58 in Kerrville. We still got some lingering fog. You can kind of even see on the horizon there a little bit of humidity, uh, but especially out near New Braunfels, where visibility is down to about a mile. So some areas of patchy fog. The biggest thing you'll notice today are the winds. Winds are going to be picking up from the south. We'll see a few gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour. So if you have yard work planned. If you have other plans outdoors, know that the wind could be just a little bit of a nuisance. But when we're highlighting the winds, you know, it's going to be a pretty good day outside. Nothing major in the way to get out, uh, in the way of you enjoying your weekend and your Saturday. But yes, a few gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour. Those winds will even pick up tonight a little bit. And those winds are going to be from the south. And so they're going to slowly bring in that Gulf of Mexico humidity today. You're not going to notice too much humidity. In fact, it should be pleasant outside, but by tomorrow, definitely on Monday and through the middle of the week, you are going to notice the muggy conditions. Mornings will not be chilly, and in fact, by Monday, we'll probably have some morning drizzle as well. But today is going to be a beautiful day, 74 by noon. Notice those winds sustained from the south, breezy at about 15 miles per hour, 84 for the high temperature in San Antonio. And then this evening, Saturday night plans going to be mild. You won't the jacket temperatures are going to be in the 70s this evening. As for highs elsewhere, warmer out to the west, El Rio, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs, Laredo, you'll be close to 90 degrees. 85 in Pleasanton, 82 in Gonzales. We were talking about Poteet, 85 degrees in Poteet today. 84 in New Braunfels, 83 in Seguin, 83 in Canyon Lake, Bernie, 81, Bandera, 86, 88 in Yavaldi, and 82 in Gonzales. Let's take a look at the national weather, shall we? All right, it's fairly quiet. 
quiet across the central plains, but we do have a lot of snow ongoing for parts of New York, a lot of rainfall for parts of the Northeast. This system is on its way out and in its wake, there's a ridge of high pressure in place across the nation and across the central plains. High means dry and in this case, it's meaning warmer too. take a look at the forecast highs across the nation. It's going to be warmer in parts of Nebraska than it is here in San Antonio today and temperatures are going to be some 25 degrees above average for parts of the northern tier of the U.S. Now it's going to be plenty warm here over the next few days with highs close to 90 degrees Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Don't forget we'll have that morning drizzle on Monday. I know you see it at the end of the forecast there. Cold front moving through on Friday. Temperatures, we're definitely going to be close to 70 degrees on Friday, so that's a 20 degree temperature drop, but it could be even cooler over the weekend. I'll have those details for the first weekend of Fiesta, mm. at least what we can see right now coming up in just a little bit. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. It is now 63 degrees and 818. All right, Wemby, you thought he was done, but no, that is not the case. We have Spurs highlights from a big, a thrilling win last night at the Frostbank Center. We will be right back. Welcome back. What a game for the silver and black at the Frostbank Center. And check out who was there to watch it all unfold. That would be Cowboys All-Pro linebacker Micah Parsons to watch the Wemby show. But it was actually Devontae Graham who hit a stunning game winner to lift the Spurs past the defending champion Denver Nuggets. Let's see how all of this happened. Denver desperately trying to hold on to the top spot in the West and doing a pretty good job of that. Spurs trolled as many by as many as 23 points until Wemby put on a clinic in the third quarter, fueling an 8-0 Spurs run all by himself. And then look at this guy, just pulling up in back-to-back -back transition threes like of nothing, the Frostbank Center erupting. So let's go ahead and fast forward to the final because here we go, Devontae Graham making some big plays, made a one-point game, and then Spurs get a stop here late, watches Trey Jones, pushes it up to Graham, and Graham, my guy right here, sinks the floater over Jamal Murray with 0.9 seconds left. Big win for the Spurs. They, we, they beat the Denver Nuggets 121 and 120. Wemby, 34 points, 12 rebounds, 5 assists. Mamu, 21 points, and Devontae Graham, 11 points, including that game winner right there. Next for the Spurs will be the last game of the regular season. That will be tomorrow. They will be hosting the Detroit Pistons at 2.30 p.m. at the Frostbank Center. All right, coming up, we're going to be talking about some football action taking place this weekend. We will be right back. All right, basketball not the only action that we're seeing right now. UTSA, they are actually hosting their spring football game today at 2 o'clock at the Alamo Dome. It is admission is free out there for all of the UTSA fans and supporters. And this is also an official Fiesta event, so they should have some medals there available for all the folks making it out. Then tomorrow in the Dome, it's going to be a busy day at the Alamo Dome here, busy weekend. Uh, it's the Brahmas versus the Battle Hawks. Yeah, San Antonio versus St. Louis kickoff there for the Brahmas. 2 o'clock, this game will be live. Live on KSAT 12. Erica, the San Antonio Brahmas right now are 2-0. Oh. Good need start. A, maybe if they start. go unbeaten, the Rock will come back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I could go for that. It's <laughs> your guy right there. That's the guy right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't right, tell guys. my husband. <laughs> uh, yeah, 827 right now, 64 degrees outside. Still ahead on GMSA, a Southside Festival is hoping to raise money for its efforts in helping students who are struggling in life. Coming up, we'll hear from a former student of the Puerto Vida Academy who tells us how the school helped turn his life around. Plus, we're getting ready for the San Antonio Book Festival today. When we come back, we'll be speaking with the director of the festival live. Good morning. It's 8.30 on Saturday, April 13th. RJ and I are back for another half hour of GMSA. Yeah, we're having a good time this morning. Hopefully you guys are doing well waking up early with us on a Saturday morning. Of course, there's going to be a lot of things taking place throughout the city of San Antonio and the surrounding area. Yeah. So let's check in with Sarah for the okay, very Okay, first latest. a little behind the scenes <laughs> okay. for folks at home. <laughs> Before the break, if you were yep. watching, Erica said The Rock is her guy. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, there's got to be a The Rock <laughs> filter on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, there is. There is, totally. Head over to my little Instagram stories if you want to see a <laughs> picture it's there. It's great. It's fantastic. It's pretty great. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the temperature forecast in San Antonio. We are going to be warm over the next few days in the and the 
week ahead. Temperatures are going to be near 90 degrees Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. But we talked about this too. A strong cold front arriving just before Friday. There's the potential that this front will bring a chilly first weekend of Fiesta. There's still some questions as to how cold this air is actually going to be. But I do think that we are going to be watching for it to be much cooler outside. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s possible for the first weekend of Fiesta. Still a ways away, all right? About seven days away. So we need some time to refine the forecast, but I wanted to give you an early heads up. As we take a look outside right now, though, it is beautiful out there. Temperatures are in the low 60s. I do have to mention, if you're in New Braunfels, there are areas of fog out there. Visibility down to about half a mile. But as the winds pick up, the the fog will disperse and that's the big headline for the day today is that it's going to be breezy nice and warm though tomorrow you will notice the humidity in fact that humidity will bring drizzle for a part of the week next week and we do have small chances for rain those details coming up in just a bit all right thank you very much sarah and of course we are following the very latest with trans guide here and take a look at what we are seeing this closure here the westbound lanes of 1604 out there at hebner from our cameras basically blanco all the way to bitters 1604 westbound traffic that's going to be completely shut down so you're seeing on the other part of your screen there the traffic headed eastbound but man 1604 at hebner already major traffic troubles there i-10 and utsa boulevard same situation here as we mentioned 1604 i-10 that entire interchange will be shut down throughout the rest of the weekend. Make sure to make some alternate plans and things do not look good out there for our drivers on the north side of town and also northwest side. Yeah, so just, you know, plan ahead. There's other ways to mm -hmm. might be a little slower, so a lot of patience. Yeah, definitely give yourself some time. All right, speaking of big things happening this weekend, the San Antonio Book Festival started just about a half hour ago. It's a chance to bring readers and writers together to celebrate literacy. We've been getting you ready for it all week by talking about some of the different authors that will be at today's event. And joining us this morning to talk more about it is Lily Gonzalez, the Book Festival's director. Good morning, Lily. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, Lily. And so for we again, we've been sharing information on this, but for someone who has never been to the festival before or for people that are new to the San Antonio area, what is uh, what is it that makes this festival just so special? If somebody has never been to the book festival before, I describe it as like a music concert where you're going to go and you're going to see many acts, but instead of musicians, authors are the rock stars here. So you can come and listen to authors talking about their books. You can meet the authors, you can buy their books. And then of course we have a lot of vendors. As you can see behind me, everybody's setting up and getting ready. So come on down and bring the whole family. Now you, you mentioned the authors. There's so many authors that are out there. Is there an author that you're most excited to see or hear from? Sure. So I get really excited about authors who have never been to the San Antonio Book Festival or some who have never even been to San Antonio. So at 10 a.m., for those who, you know, want to get here really soon, Silvia Moreno Garcia, who's the author of Mexican Gothic, she will be presenting her new book, Silver Nitrate. So very excited about Silvia. Yeah, we tend to uh, attract some big names here, and I know this thing has just grown over the past couple of years. Want to let you know, Lily, uh, so we also want to make sure that we uh, clarify that this is for everyone, right? I mean, this is going to be something for adults, kids, everyone out there is going to have something to see at the book festival. Absolutely. And so one of the things, especially for families that have children, Magic Theater is back at the San Antonio Book Festival. They go on at, I believe, 11 a.m. So that, that's always such a crowd pleaser. It's a free performance for children. So bring the kids down. There's something for kids. We have a full roster of you know children's authors performing outside in the gazebo. HEB sponsors the children's area. So they'll be giving out you know refreshments and snacks and activities. So yeah, it's, a, it's just a great family friendly event. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lily, for joining us. We'll talk to you a little bit more in our next hour. That is Lily Gonzalez, the director of the San Antonio Book Festival. Yeah, cannot wait to see the crowd that we get out there. Of course, oh, this yeah. event just continues to grow, and it's a great opportunity for, again, a lot of people to go out, learn about these authors, learn about different cultural books. So and many of that kinds nature. of books, so many yes. different genres that you can just 
it's just a great time. I, I went last year with my daughter and she loved it. Yeah, and it just continues to get bigger and bigger. All right, guys, 836 right now, 64 degrees outside. Still ahead on GMSA, a major cyber attack on thousands of Roku accounts, how hackers were able to access those accounts, and what you can do if you use Roku. Plus, a taste of the South Side is more than just a festival. It's raising money for a good cause. When we come back, how the festival is benefiting the Por Vida Academy and the work that they do there. And taking a look outside live with City Cam. Look at that. It's a beautiful shot of downtown San Antonio. So many events going on. Yep. We just mentioned that uh, the Taste of the South Side, mm -hmm. Hotel Strawberry oh, Festival, yeah. there's so much <laughs> going on this weekend. And how's the weather going to be for it? Well, Sarah's going to let us know just a bit. Welcome back. It is 840. A lot of festivals and events going on right now for a good cause, including the Taste of the South Side. Yeah, it's raising money that is critical to supporting education programs and breaking generational cycles, and it's taking place this weekend. Very important there. Tiffany Huerta shows us how a South Side charter school is making a lasting impact on students. I didn't necessarily want to be in school at the time. Like, I was 17, half a credit. Uh, I had the tattoos. I was already incarcerated. My dad was incarcerated, uh, I think believed in his time you know, in high school. My grandpa was incarcerated. But it was a teacher at Por Vida Academy, a charter high school, that helped turn Enrique Salinas' life around. And it all started with a class assignment. I do the handout, I gave back to him, and then he gives me another one. And I'm like, okay, there's, I'm looking around, there's no one doing any work, so I'm like, so I just... And I give him again, and then he gives me a third assignment. I'm like, what the hell? Like, there's no one doing anything. Why are you like? So I do the third one, and I go like, here, you know, like, <laughs> leave me alone, you know. And then uh, he's like, hey man, can I talk to you? And I was like, yeah. And I went over there. He's like, what? Hey, what's going on? Like, what's your name? Like, why? Why are you here? And then that's the start of the relationship. After graduating from the academy in 2013, Salinas earned two associates of liberal arts and psychology from St. Philip's College. He then earned his bachelor and master of social work degree from Texas State University. And he is currently a doctoral <laughs> student at the University of Texas at Austin Steve Hicks School of Social Work. And there's still students like me that come through these doors. There's non-traditional students. Students from all over Bear County and surrounding communities can come to this school. We've had kids come from Bernie ISD, North Side, South Side, um, and they all kind of just filter in, primarily due to behavioral issues, things like that, homelessness, all sorts of reasons to label them at risk. But when you get to know them and talk to them on a social emotional level, you really realize that they have more to their story and we really take the time to kind of get to know them. Salinas is getting ready to give back and participating in this year's Taste of the Southside Festival taking place on campus April 13th and 14th. There will be entertainment, food, art, and all the money raised goes back to support the school programs. Salinas welcomes the community to the event and has a message for students going through a challenging time in their lives. These hard times do shape you and they're, you know, they're kind of unfortunate, but this is where character is built, this is where your drive is built, so no matter what you're, where you're at, where you're facing, just continue. Um, there's going to be better days. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Here's the info for Taste of the South Side. It's going on today and tomorrow from noon to 10 p.m. each day out on Mission Road. There will be a lot of fun activities for the kids, and the Kids Zone is free for children 2 to 10 years old. Admission is just $5. Children 12 and under are free. Of course, all of this benefits the Por Vida Academy. Great event that they're doing out there mm -hmm. today. I am just glad that we are finally having some good weekend weather, oh, yeah. guys. It's oh, been a yeah. while Perfect. since we've had like mm -hmm. really nice weekend weather. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be this weekend. You'll notice the humidity tomorrow, but hey, we're, we're used yeah. to we'll take some it. Yes. Humidity, <laughs> At least there's sunshine. <laughs> there is. And yes. in fact, this morning, sunrise was beautiful. We yes. got this picture into our KSAT Connect Aww. feature. You oh, can post great. your sunset, sunrise pictures if you have them on KSAT Connect. It's the camera icon on our Weather Authority app or just type in KSAT Connect on Google. It'll take you right to it. So thank you for sending in that picture. This was out in Seguin. What I love about this picture is that you can see the beautiful layers of clouds, but then also on the horizon, you can see a little bit of fog too. And there have been some areas with some fog this morning, but as the winds pick up, that fog is dissipating. 
nice look at the airport right now. Temperatures generally in the 60s, 62 in San Antonio, 55 in Hondo. Del Rio, good morning. It's 67, 63 in Rock Springs, 63 in Catula, and 64 in Beeville. But temperatures you'll notice are a little bit warmer than how we've started off the last mornings. In fact, temperatures are some 10 to 15 degrees warmer than the last couple of mornings, and that's all because the humidity is slowly starting to rise. We're going to be looking at partly cloudy skies today. Around noon, it'll be 74. Nice Saturday brunch outdoors if you want. And then this afternoon, 84 for the high temperature. If you have Saturday night plans, you won't need the jacket. Unlike the last couple of nights where you've wanted a light jacket, tonight temperatures are going to be in the 70s after sunset, so no jacket needed. The only hiccup in today's forecast, the only thing that might be a bit of a nuisance to you, would be the winds. Winds are going to be touch gusty from the south. Wind gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour at times. So if you're planning on doing some yard work, just know that it is going to be a little bit on the breezy side. Those winds from the south are going to amp up the humidity. So this afternoon, dew points are going to be in the 50s. It's not going to be too humid, but by tomorrow, dew points are going to be close to 70 degrees, which is very noticeably humid. In fact, tomorrow we may have a bit of a heat index value at times. So as we look at our future cast, the humidity bringing some morning clouds tomorrow. We'll have some peaks of sunshine tomorrow afternoon. By Monday, it's just going to be so downright humid that we're going to have areas of drizzle in the morning on Monday for that morning commute. So just to give you a little bit of a heads up. Then by Tuesday, there's really only a small chance for an isolated shower uh, as we'll have be on the tail end of a system. Chance for rain on Tuesday is only 20%. So looking at your planning forecast again, humid tomorrow and by Monday we'll have some morning drizzle. Take a look at temperatures Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's going to be warm. Temperatures are going to be near 90 degrees. But as is often the case around Fiesta, we're going to get a cold front. In fact, temperatures are going to fall to near 70 degrees on Friday, and there are some indications that we could even have cooler weather next weekend for the first weekend of Fiesta. Highs may be in the 60s, maybe mm. even cooler if that front ends up being pretty strong, and there are some indications that it could be on the stronger side. So no major chance for rain and a pretty warm and humid week ahead. But by this time next week, it should be noticeably cooler, guys. Mm. I don't mind that. It's okay. It's always a good start to Fiesta. It was a little chilly. Oh, yeah. And I remember there's been night parades mm -hmm. where it has been cold. cold. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, this is Fiesta weather. Yep. We get those cold fronts that move on through. I'd Horse rather it be that than, mm -hmm. like, the humid, sticky... Oh, We've I'll also had always. plenty of parades where it has been that hot. hot. Before, Very hot, sure. yes. Okay, thank yeah. you, Sarah. Sarah. Now, don't forget to sign up for our Battle of Flowers contest. You can win the chance to ride in the parade. Just scan the QR code right there on your screen with your phone, and it will take you to our website where you can enter the contest. All right, so here's what you got to do. You have until midnight today to enter for a chance to win. All you have to do is answer the prompt, I love the Battle of Flowers parade because in 15 words or less. Mine would be the <laughs> high school bands. High I love seeing bands? them. Yes. Oh, just everybody is just so happy and there's yes. confetti everywhere. Uh, it's a day it's off. Just, <laughs> it's nice. just a good time. Um, a winner will be chosen either tomorrow or Monday. Should be a lot of fun out there for the folks and make sure to uh, sign up for that opportunity. Okay, 848 right now, 64 degrees. Have you filed your taxes, RJ? Um, no comment. Okay. <laughs> You're running out of time. You're running out of time. Yes, yes. What you need to know before the deadline on Monday coming up. And, and also we'll, we'll, one more quick look here at Transguide traffic cameras. Again, we have got some major construction taking place there at the 1604 I-10 interchange, also 1604 westbound. Parts of that closed from Blanco to Bitters, but other parts of the area looking pretty good out there. I do want to add that Monday is also RJ's birthday. So oh, wow. Let's look at that. Shout out for the birthday. <laughs> Here is a look at your lotto. This is your pick three, 7023. Your daily numbers are three, four, four, nine, and four. All right, cash five, four, five, 18, 22, and 33. That's actually one of my lucky numbers there. All right, and the Texas lotto, the Mega Millions here, we have 1, 12, 14, 18, 66, 16, and power play 2. Good luck. 
In your morning headlines, the recent recalls of Ford Bronco and escape vehicles are being investigated by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. The agency says the cars could have cracked fuel injectors that can cause gas leaks and ignite engine fires. Nearly 43,000 SUVs made in 2022 and 2023 are impacted so far. No injuries have been reported. All right, well, if you have a Roku, make sure to check your account because there was a major cyber attack on thousands of those accounts. The streaming company says that hackers got access to their user accounts through stolen login information, exploiting people who use the same username and password for different accounts. The login information likely came from a data breach on a different site. In fewer than 400 cases, the hackers used Roku accounts to make purchases, but did not access sens sensitive financial information. The company is reversing charges and refunding all of those affected accounts. User passwords were automatically reset and Roku will reach out to users affected by this hack. Just a few days remain for you to file your 2023 taxes. The deadline is Monday, but if you live in Maine or Massachusetts or live or work in a federally declared disaster areas, you'll get more time to file. Now, if you owe and fail to file by the due date, the IRS will issue a 5% penalty for each month you're late. And if you file in an extension by April 15th, you will have until October 15th to file your taxes. You'll still be able to send your return to the IRS electronically or by mail. All right, got to get that done. <laughs> yeah, you should that's, know the deadline. Know. It's your birthday. I, it's always been that. Yeah, that's always been the case here. Uh, <laughs> 8.54 right now. And look at that. We're taking up a little bit here on a crisp Saturday, 65 degrees outside. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, the official start of Fiesta is five days away, but several organizations around the city are already getting into the spirit. San Antonio Sports is hosting its third annual Fiesta Fit Fest this weekend. It kicked off yesterday and continues today and tomorrow at UTSA's main campus. There will be running opportunities, walking, cycling, and other workouts. Yeah, that big uh, cycling race, the L'Etape. I wonder if Wemby Say that again? there. Say that again? I don't know. <laughs> Wemby, let me know what's up. Uh, many of the activities are free, but some do require a payment and registration. Registration. You can find a list of activities and other information about Fiesta Fit Fest on KSAT.com. If you or your child are a fan of Hello Kitty, the Hello Kitty Cafe truck is returning to San Antonio today. It'll be out at North Star Mall from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., parked on the corner of the 410 Access Road and McCullough Avenue. Fans can snag some limited edition collectibles like an iridescent tote bag or a three-piece cookie sheet, but you might want to get in line early because there's usually a long line for the cafe truck. And remember, they only accept credit or debit card payments. No cash. Isn't Stephanie a big help? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, I wonder if she's, wonder if she's gonna be lined up this morning. <laughs> yeah, all right guys, 857 right now, 65 degrees out there. We're just getting started. We still have a whole nother hour of GMSA, so stay with us.